Times are uncertain right now for Ken and Arlene Boone. The couple have lived here in Bear Flat for 37 years. Before that, Arlene's grandfather tended this land. For decades, the Boones have cherished this property. But by the end of the month, they may have to start looking at other options. Their home is scheduled to be bodozed by the end of May, so Highway 29 can be realigned to go right through their property part of ongoing construction with the Site C project. We just take one day at a time right now. With this election, um, May 9th, you know, if NDP get in, um, things could change on the ground for us. You know, it could mean that they, they stop the process of this highway being, starting to be realigned, which means that our house wouldn't be bulldozed down. So, you know, we just take one day at a time, if um, tomorrow we wake up and the NDP gets in, um, they put a stop to the contracts going out for this highway realignment, we may not have to move out of our house. And so that's, you know, that's, um, that's our life right now in limbo. The Boones say many of the landowners in the Peace River Valley have never been properly consulted on why the proposed highway realignment will not only go through dozens of landowners' properties, but also impact First Nations cultural sites like ceremonial burial grounds and sweat camps. If they can't reveal their justification for the route that's chosen, um, you know that to us indicates a real problem. You know, you know if you're gonna if you're gonna expropriate people and destroy their houses, you should be able to reveal to them why that highway realignment was chosen, and we have not received that. Back in March, the couple watched as contractors clear-cut this area, just 40 acres below their home. They were told the merchantable timber in the area would be harvested. Instead, it was left in a pile of mulch. Just that small little area, they, um, our riparian area was not flagged, you know, for whatever reason, and uh, they mulched right through it. Um, and so for oh, like a month and a half now, uh, it's been flowing water out of what we call Chicken Creek, flowing water through big mounds of mulch right in the Cache Creek. And uh, Natural Resource you know, Operations is investigating that, but it just goes on and on. And, and a lot of times we see the, all these really end up, you know, the enforcement, the, there's no real teeth in the enforcement of these issues. So, you know, they'll get a warning. Um, they'll be threatened with a fine if they don't get in compliance, but, you know, they miraculously always seem to uh, get in compliance again and then it carries on. The Boons say it's just one small example of the many social and environmental issues that have been brought up since the beginning of the construction of the Site C hydroelectric dam and many landowners here, along with opposition from across the province, would like to see the project get a proper and full review from the BC Utilities Commission. They say it's not too late to make a change. Right now, I mean, we are right now seeing, you know, death by a thousand cuts of the Peace River Valley. But it's important to note that, you know, nothing that's happened here is irreversible. And, and, um, and it's, you know, this project, as far as environmental damage, let alone the economic damage, is not past the point of no return by, by a long means. And, and uh, you know, there's... The day this thing's cancelled, there's contractors that could go to work, um, you know, just removing the mulch. You know, there's some places down in the creek bottom here, there's three feet of mulch laying on the ground. That has to be removed so that the pH of the soil is not screwed up where something can grow there again. The Boons hope a newly elected government will look at other, more modern alternative energy projects that could be done in the region with partnership of First Nations and put an end to the Site C project entirely. But until then, they say they'll keep fighting for their land, fighting for this valley, and fighting for future generations. I am lucky and Ken and I are just so fortunate to be um, third generation farmers and owners of this property, to be able to, well, pass it on to our grandkids is our, is our dream and our future that we would love to do with this property. Brendan Miller, CJDC-TV News in the Peace River Valley.